I'm Bob Horvitz, and I'm a faculty member in the Department of Biology at MIT and a member of the McGovern Institute for Brain Research. My fascination with biology is very broad. I, I literally am amazed every day that we can exist. And by we, I mean not only people, I mean all the organisms around us. I look around and the diversity of life and the fact that we are here is remarkable. The animal I study is a microscopic roundworm called Cenorhabditis elegans, simplified to C. elegans by many. So this tiny worm, C. elegans, has a nervous system that is remarkably simple. There are in C. elegans 302 nerve cells. We know how they are interconnected. We know the so-called wiring diagram of this animal. It is the only animal in biology where we know the entire circuitry of the nervous system. One of the remarkable findings of the last 15 years in biology is that much of biology is highly conserved. So if we look at the molecules that signal in the C. elegans nervous systems, all of these small signaling molecules are shared between worms and humans. And what that means is if we study C. elegans and understand and identify and discover the genes, the proteins, the small molecules, and the mechanisms that control the nervous system in this animal, it is very likely that what we find will prove to be general amongst animals and lead to insights concerning human biology and human disease. One of the biggest excitements in, in my scientific career uh, was in the context of our studies of programmed cell death. Programmed cell death refers to cell death that is naturally occurring. It's a bit counterintuitive that cell death should be a normal part of biology, but in fact it turns out that many animals, probably all animals, have cells that are generated and really do nothing other than die. Our studies of programmed cell death in C. elegans first and foremost led us to discover that there are genes that control this process. Even that simple finding was a surprise to many in the field. The general thinking was cells die because they're unhappy, they're sick. Okay, so if cells are dying, something must be going wrong. What we found was that genes control this process and that certain genes must act in order for cells to die by programmed cell death. This said that programmed cell death is an active process. Then having identified genes, we analyzed them. We discovered there were both killer genes and protector genes and we defined a pathway of action for a set of genes that regulate the process of programmed cell death. As we did that, studies mostly from other people around the world found that there were counterparts of our genes in mammals, and that these counterparts did what we had found them to do in C. elegans. Today, the discoveries that we made concerning programmed cell death are being used to develop new therapies to treat a variety of diseases. For example, if you think about diseases like cancer, in which there's too little cell death, if you could activate the cell death program in a direct way, you could have a highly specific way of killing cancer cells. Conversely, diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and Huntington's and Lou Gehrig's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and two dozen other neurodegenerative diseases all involve the deaths of nerve cells that should survive. If you could block that cell death, you could treat the disease. And both of these approaches are now being taken in the pharmaceutical industry, driven by discoveries we made using this tiny round worm. Molecules like serotonin and dopamine and various neuropeptides 
are referred to by neuroscientists as neuromodulators. They modulate the activity of the nervous system. These molecules also are central in a variety of, of human disorders, uh, including neuropsychiatric disorders, depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's disease. These molecules are shared between humans and C. elegans, and we have studied them in C. elegans. And what we have done is to identify new genes and proteins that are involved in controlling responses to these neurotransmitters. And what I hope is that the studies we have done to identify novel neuromodulator molecules will prove to be as relevant to human biology and human disease as has our set of studies involving programmed cell death. When I began studying C. elegans, neither I nor anyone else could know if what we found would prove to be of relevance to any organism other than C. elegans. However, I believed firmly a number of things. One was whatever we found, if it was new biology, would be interesting. And to me, interesting findings, discovery, knowledge about biology, knowledge about the world is a driver. I think it's very important. I find it very important personally. And I think it's very important for all of us as human beings to want to know and to want to satisfy our knowledge about the world around us. And I hope that our continued studies of the nervous system of C. elegans will again over and over shed light on fundamental aspects of how brains develop and work.